What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Film Therapy with me, your host Ian. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a preview of the UEFA Super Cup between Chelsea and Liverpool. An exciting game, a difficult game, a potentially embarrassing game. We'll have to see what happens but how are both teams going to approach the game? Is it important to each team? Well, let's get into it. Actually, before we do get into it, I'd like to request that you do subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell notifications icon because I upload all the time uh, yeah to keep it locked and why not like the video to help me out right so the Super Cup midweek away in Istanbul Liverpool coming off a really easy win at home at Anfield against promoted side Norwich on Friday night Chelsea coming off a 4-0 drubbing away in the Midlands at Old Trafford late Sunday afternoon so less rest for Chelsea Football Club more travel for Chelsea Football Club and I know it's the fault of their own, but they were slapped about, but certainly a much harder fixture for Chelsea Football Club. Poor Super Frankie Lampard and his young, inexperienced Chelsea. Could have been the other way around in terms of preparation, but whatever, that is football. Obviously, even before the extra rest and the fixtures and whatever, Liverpool are absolutely overwhelming favourites for this game. But let's talk about how it might go down, so let's pull up the formation screen. So let's start with Liverpool. Now I'm going to throw up a couple of graphics next to me of two potential lineups or general sort of speculated lineups and approaches uh, Jurgen Klopp might take towards this game. One thing is for certain, he will deploy a 4-3-3 formation as per usual and it will be the classic Jurgen Klopp Gengen Press 4-3-3 I'm going to tell you a new one approach. The only real question here is how seriously is Jurgen Klopp going to take this game? Now let's take a second to think about this. This season, domestically, Liverpool have to go all in for the Premier League. They're on like an absolute high from their points total last season and winning the Champions League. And even though Klopp's a really good coach and they've bought well, there is a sort of touch of the golden generation of this Liverpool side. They're so, so strong and the sort of chemistry and team cohesion is very high. You'd imagine they would not want to waste that and go all in for finally that elusive Premier League title even if they're coming up against an absolute machine in Manchester City. So with that in mind, how does he look at the Super Cup? Does he think, you know what, I don't need to go to, you know, travel to another country and tire out these first team players when we want to go all in on the domestic campaign. So I'm going to field a, you know, a B team essentially, a, a second tier side, a second string side and think, you know, to be honest, looking at Chelsea at the moment and the transition they're in and the lack of top tier players or the lack of Eden Hazard and, and, and an inexperienced coach, I'll put out a Liverpool B team and to be honest, they'll probably beat Chelsea comfortably anyway. That's how he might think. And also with that, he can also check out these sort of fringe players and be like, you know what, maybe I can introduce you into the first team into the Premier League. But people like maybe Origi, I know he's played in the Premier League, but you know, have another proper look at him in a competitive game, um, the Shakiris of this world, etc. So he may well take that approach. You might want to give these players a chance to feel more involved, see if they can prove themselves more, or just basically rest his top, top elite players. Like I said, Chelsea don't look like they're proving to be a massive threat at the moment. You know, maybe down the line when Frank settles a bit more, but a Liverpool B team might well beat Chelsea's first team right now. But then again, saying that, he might just go for the straight up Liverpool first team and try and raise confidence, team cohesion. Do you know what I mean? Just throw them all in, say, look, have fun, it's, a, it's a basically an early trophy, slap Chelsea about a little bit, raise confidence and, you know, morale's at an all-time high early doors in the season. So, yeah, that's why I've thrown up these two different lineups next to me. One's generally the strongest Liverpool lineup and one's maybe the B team, which probably would still give Chelsea loads of problems. <laughs> really, it does, like I said, just come down to how Klopp and Liverpool view this competition and how they view the opposition of Chelsea. Remember, me saying that Liverpool's B side could beat Chelsea is not slight on Chelsea's ability or quality. It's literally down to the fact how Frank Lampard's Chelsea is absolutely in its embryonic stage. 
So that's all that's going to happen. The, the Klopp and Liverpool project is years and years into its sort of tenure. So, you know, it's no, I'm not slagging off Chelsea or Lampard. It's just the way it is. Right, let's talk about Chelsea's approach for a little bit. So I've thrown up a couple of graphics beside me of potential Chelsea lineups. Now, Frank is a pragmatic manager in the sense of he will change formations, maybe a little bit too much. So maybe that's not pragmatic or meta. Point being is he's happy to change formations, but... After the Manchester United drubbing, I did say, in hindsight, I felt a diamond midfield would have protected Chelsea more in the transition. Um, it's a, you know, hindsight's a beautiful thing, and perhaps if Chelsea had played the diamond, United would have used more whip for whatever rather than going down the middle, whatever. But in this game against Liverpool, playing a diamond, although it might be interesting to try and protect the midfield on the transition, it would be suicide leaving the flanks exposed for four reasons in particular, well, potential reasons depending on the lineup Salah, Mane, Robertson, and Alexander Arnold. So, yeah, you leave those flanks exposed, those guys will have an absolute field day and tear Chelsea apart. So, I think Frank will take it seriously, well, he has to take it seriously, and I think he will yet again go for a 4 2 3 1, but try and iron out some of the mistakes that. Uh, we all saw at Old Trafford. And when I say Frank has to take this game seriously, oh, he doesn't have to, but if you think about, it doesn't matter for Liverpool either way, but after that poor result at Old Trafford, and they're just for general, Frank's very much in a proving ground. If he, I don't want to say beats Liverpool, but if he puts in a really decent performance and gives Liverpool a game, people can start to take Frank Lampard a bit seriously early doors. Obviously it's dumb to judge someone in their first competitive game in management at such a difficult fixture with a transfer ban with your best player gone everyone knows the narrative and if everyone thinks about it sensibly they'll know not to judge Lampard from the United game plus the scoreline didn't do the performance justice to be honest but any form of result in this game would do wonders for Frank Lampard so who should go all in to make it work as best he can. So there's not too much difference to the uh, lineups I've put in. Really, the strikers, Giroud or Michi for me would be interesting purely because Tammy just played, and I feel like they do both need a chance. It would be a different approach. Uh, Giroud would probably be a smart, smart way to go. I think he probably will play. If he can sit back and do link, a link up play when Chelsea break out as well, I feel like Pulisic should start. And Chelsea, if they're more disciplined in transition and keep deeper they should be a bit safer and with Kente starting as well maybe he could mop up better and stop and intercept those sort of uh, balls between the lines on the break maybe anyway at this point let me know what your Chelsea starting lineup should be for the Super Cup get down in the comments below and tell me who you think should be playing there and why an obvious issue with Chelsea's play is their vulnerability to set pieces I mean, this has been a problem for Chelsea for a while now, but especially Frank Lampard. I've talked about it before, his Derby team, and now it looks a little bit like his Chelsea team. His tactical approach or his the way he sets out his team or the way he coaches his team, conceding goals from set pieces or conceding chances from set pieces is a huge issue for Frank Lampard. And when you've got people like Virgil van Dijk lingering in the box, I don't need to tell you there's danger there regardless and any team is vulnerable defending a set piece with that dude knocking about but in any case and regardless to the approach Chelsea are going to be needing to be so vigilant the way they play against Liverpool uh, midweek so I've thrown up a couple of different graphics next to me now apart from being vulnerable at set pieces Chelsea need to be aware of two major dangers essentially from Liverpool in terms of playing in open play. The general 4-3-3 build up um, from Liverpool in open play, uh, whether they're just, you know, they're passing combinations because they pass incredibly fast in the final third and around the sort of 18 yard box. Chelsea need to stay compact and keep maybe two banks of four um, just to try and prevent Liverpool from getting in because that will that is incredibly dangerous from them. Their combinational play is very, very good. Obviously, Chelsea are very, very vulnerable to the counter-attack, and Liverpool are excellent at counter-attacks. They can play balls over the top, and they've just got lightning-quick players that can break out on you, much like Manchester United have and did against Chelsea on the weekend. So... Chelsea can't play the same way they did against Manchester United. To be fair to Frank, he probably thought 
Man United won't be as big of a threat as they were on the break, even though maybe that was a bit naive, but he'll absolutely know that Liverpool are. So the space between the lines need to be more compact and fullbacks certainly says Azpilicueta needs to stay back and a little bit more narrow. The problem is with Azpilicueta, he had a really poor game at Old Trafford, but he is a good one-on-one -on -one defender. I'd be probably feel quite safe with him playing centre back in this game because Liverpool, although they at set pieces, they have Van Dijk who can head it, head the ball in on Matip or someone. In their build-up play, they don't really head the ball in. So having someone who can defend one-on-one -on, -one on the deck that doesn't need to be tall, Cesar Azpilicueta, that would really work for me. And then for fullback, maybe play Zappa Costa, I don't know, you know, it's difficult. Or Emerson moves over to play Alonso, so maybe something tries something different. But in terms of a solid 1v1 defender, maybe Azpilicueta would work as a centre-back. But regardless, he needs to stay back and more narrow and get forward less, which hopefully he will do. And with that, Chelsea need to sacrifice a lot of the offensive moves down the right-hand flank because it was a weakness for Chelsea last time out. So if he does stay back and stay narrow, Chelsea can maybe try and play down the middle a bit more or straight up play long balls to Giroud, knock it down, maybe give it to Pulisic and hope for the best. All right, that is enough of the formations page for the moment. There's a load of reactionary Chelsea fans after Frank Lampard's 4-0 loss at Old Trafford, but the truth is Chelsea did approach the game in a positive way. There was just a lot of naivety in tactical approach and poor individual errors and player performances, but it does leave Chelsea and the sort of feeling of Chelsea in a fragile space. Now, no one will be expecting Chelsea to win in the Super Cup, although it would be incredibly Chelsea to beat Liverpool after capitulating 4-0 uh, in a league game. But what needs to be seen is a little bit of awareness, a lesson learned. Do you know what I mean? They can't go and play the same naive way they did at Old Trafford. They need to be a little bit more compact. Sure, everyone knows the intention of Frank Lampard. Play a bit more open, play direct, you know, take risks, be exciting, but also don't be naive and don't be suicidal. Shades of when Maurizio Sarri tried to go toe to toe with Manchester City and got slapped 6-0. Even shades of Port of Norwich, bless them, when they went to Anfield a couple of days ago and conceded four goals by trying to go toe to toe. Don't get me wrong, Chelsea have a good team, but they're just, no, there's no chemistry yet. And that's okay, that's understandable, but until the point they develop said chemistry, Frank and the team need to be pragmatic. You could see there's no partnerships yet. That's the issue, there's no partnerships. We saw a couple in pre-season, none defensively. The only partnerships we saw in pre-season were a few in midfield when they played the diamond. Barkley and Pulisic looked very, very good combining. There was a good understanding there. So we need to nurture those. But other than that, go back to basics, play compact and settle into the season. It's okay to lose like two to Liverpool or 3-1 in the Super Cup. If you score a good goal, you nearly score a couple of other goals and you know, the goals that you can see are just through excellent quality from the opposition, not from dumb mistakes or just looking very vulnerable on the transition. I'm a realist, I don't necessarily think Chelsea will win, they could win uh, if they put, you know, Frank sort of raises the morale and gets their heads into it and maybe Liverpool are caught sleeping a little bit, but they're a better team than Chelsea at the moment. Chelsea can develop into a very good team, but it would be so naive and silly to say they should be that now. But, you know, Chelsea could win. Chelsea could win. I am going to be super, super optimistic. If, I'll tell you, I'm going to disclaim this. If Klopp plays a second string side, which is still be very strong, I think it might be a score draw. And then Chelsea can win on penalties because they don't have Alisson. But if they play a full string team, I think Chelsea will lose. Let me know your predictions. Get down in the comments below. What's your score prediction for the Super Cup? Uh, and give me your sort of explanation why you think that will be the scoreline. Anyway, so I want to sort of wrap it up for today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I did a live stream yesterday, the first football therapy live stream. It was good fun. 
love chatting to you lot. Uh, I think it peaked to about 150 people in the chat room at one point. I want to do it a lot of evenings, so if you're watching this video, check it out. Check, follow me on Twitter, at Football Yannick, or check out the posts that I do on the YouTube platform, letting you know when I'm going to do a live stream. Swing by, get in the chat, and we can talk about football and whatever, really. It's really fun. I really enjoy it, so try and check out the live stream. Also, you can become a Patreon to my channel and support me and support the channel. Link is in the description. That's it from me, guys. Hopefully Chelsea don't get bad tomorrow. They could do. We'll see what happens. But enjoy the football, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me be